If you own a home, there are a few things you should know about radon gas. It occurs naturally in the ground and usually seeps into the basement first, and if it's in your home, that's where you'll find the highest concentration. When radon gas finds its way into the home through cracks in the foundation floor or wall, through gaps around pipes, or if you have a sump hole that isn't capped, mm -hmm. then it can accumulate and get to high levels. Radon is the second leading cause of lung cancer, and that's why it is important to test your home. Health Canada recommends that you do a long-term test okay. for a minimum of three months. And the reason for that is radon levels vary significantly mm -hmm. even from one day to the next. So to, oh. to have an accurate representation of what you're being exposed to, you mm -hmm. want to do that long-term test. In the fall-winter time period is an ideal time as well when your windows and doors are closed. Do-it-yourself radon detectors are the simplest and cheapest way to test your home. Kits are available at home supply stores. It should be left in your home undisturbed for three months and then sent back to the laboratory to be tested. For more information about radon and other potential hazards in the home, you can visit www.healthycanadians.gc.ca slash hazard check or call 1-800-O-CANADA. Where's the mouse? There we go. Oh, let's cancel that. That was uh All right, that's a scam, you know, that raid yeah, on yeah. gas below baloney. I reckon it's all a scam. Yeah. I reckon there's no threat at all from raid on gas. Mm. Well, I can't work out, but you have to. You get this buy this device. Did you, did you notice? Did you notice that Happy Family on the cover of the oh, packaging? Oh, here we go. Right there, I've the got raid on gas. Yeah, the raid on gas. It's you as if it's a happy family. There's a happy family. Oh, Checks you and your, oh, your well, your beloved family. Right there. Right there. Yeah, that, that, there. Oh, there, there's yeah, a happy chance. You and your beloved family yeah, it's from the dangers of radon gas. Yeah, it's as if they're trying to... See, the happy family is an illusion. It's all bullshit, the happy family oh, right. image. Because most families are dysfunctional. Most families are dysfunctional. Everyone knows that, yeah, don't they? But on here, they're promoting the happy family. Yeah. Protect your happy family from this thing that... Well, it's not isn't dangerous. Yeah, three months. So you put it in your home for three months in in a place somewhere, and you send it off. It doesn't detect radon. You just send it off to a lab, a lab, and they do a few things with it. And they do an an analysis of the, of the the reading. Absolutely. And from what we gather, they then calculate. They calculate the radon that should be affected. That should have affected the uh, testing. Yeah, the tester. They're, so they only calculate it. They're not actually detecting mm, radon. radon. Absolutely, of course. It reminds me of it reminds me of uh, Ramsey and how Ramsey actually determined or discovered radon gas, yeah. radioactive radon gas yeah. in the first place. Yeah, yeah. It's a shame you and me weren't around at the time. We could have said, uh, "Well, no. what the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I think we should get on and annoy a few, few people, people, especially at this time. At Christmas time. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you can be very intelligent and very good at what you do, and you can still be stupid. Yeah, well, we're back again uh, on the uh, on the uh, Christmas Day. Christmas Day of all days. On oh, Christmas Day, uh, back again, annoying people with our views and, and opinions. opinions because oh, because loads of Santas dislike hearing our views and opinions, and a lot of Christians as well. I'm sure. Oh right, yes, a lot absolutely, of Christians because yeah. we're we're not. Uh, I was a bit like when we walked we don't up, do Christmas. It's do like we? when we walked into town yesterday and there was this guy talking about uh, oh God and all this lot. Preaching in the street, yeah, yeah. and then I actually, yeah, we were we were walking in, um, we were look, walking in town, and there was a guy on the side of the street talking about Jesus and God and how Jesus can save your, save you from your sins, save you from your sins and all this stuff. And I actually looked at him, and un, it was unusual for me to do this, but I actually called, well, I actually called out to him, 
I said, you're mad. Mm. You know, because when I looked at him doing what he was doing and saying what he's saying, I can't understand what he's talking about. No. I, I can't literally... I, I can't literally understand what he's talking about. I'm talking about God and Jesus and all this. I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah. He's mad. He's got mental health, health problems. problems. Yeah. In our opinion, of course. You know. In our opinion. But that was the first time I've ever done it. Maybe I should do it more often. Oh, right, well, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. of course, yeah. Maybe. yes. Maybe, but, maybe. But, you know, each to their own. Well, at the end of the day, you've got to, be, you've got to have some kind of problem to be, able to be doing that and yeah. to be talking in certain code... Oh, well, yeah. in, mm. in a certain manner that other people can't understand what you're saying. Mm. Absolutely, because mm. not many people understand what all these re religious, religious people are on about anyway. Oh, right. The Holy Spirit. The Holy the Spirit. Father, the, the, Son, Son, the, the Holy Spirit. The Father, the Son, and the Holy, Holy Ghost, Spirit. and Jesus, and God. Yeah. Nobody can define God. It's what all God fantasy is. Well, it's, it? it's a fantasy. fantasy. Absolutely. Yeah. And Christmas. Christmas is the climax, isn't it, really? Of of the Christian belief system, system. Mm. I'd say cr Christmas is, isn't it? Because well, it's yeah. the birth of, it's the birth of a religion, an understanding. Mm. The birth of of, of uh, well, well, yeah, absolutely. The birth of yeah. well, the birth of bullshit. The birth of bullshit, absolutely. Because it is bullshit. We don't do Christmas, but we thought we'd do a, a festive special, didn't we? Yeah, that's why we called it a festive special, not a Christmas special. Actually, yeah, we don't do we don't do Christmas Christmas dinners and what else Santas and all this presents and oh well, yeah, all this rubbish. Yeah, because it is literally Cause it's just rubbish. another day. It's, just it's a pretense. Day. Pretense. Yeah, that's the main thing about Christmas. It's one huge Pre pretense. pretense. So many people out there in the world thinking that they're going to be happy for Christmas Day. Thinking they, they can all come together with their family who they don't get on with, oh, well, their yeah. estranged family, family yeah. and get on with them just for one exactly. day of the yeah. year. Yeah. Well, I've done my bit for family. We've well, got to make an effort, Brian. But why? Why do I need to make an effort? You've got to make an effort. Why? Anyway, come on. I was watching a bit of a little bit of television today, mainstream oh. television, and they always promote uh, that Christmas is. Is they're all happy at Christmas time and it's, oh, right, yeah. it's a good thing to be around and I'm sure there's the Queen talking about um, some rubbish and uh, giving hope, giving hope, Christmas giving hope and all this kind of stuff and I'm thinking but it's it's all rubbish. It's all rubbish. They're, it's all filled with false hopes. False, false hopes and broken prom promises. False hopes and broken promises. promises. A Christian society. And that's what you'll get from a Christian society. society. False mm. hopes and broken, broken promises. promises. Oh, sorry, that's what you get from most societies. Oh, that's what you get from most societies. Do apologize, matter of whether course. it's Christian or not. Anyway, come on. But anyway, so on this uh, festive special, Peter, what have we got for everyone's displeasure? Oh, well, what we've got for every, all those Santas out there. For all those, well, well, firstly, we do have to say that we do hope everyone is having a good day today. A good day today. Yeah, we do yeah, wish well, everyone a good, good day. Um, holiday period. Festive period, yeah. Anyway, Absolutely, of course. But yeah. that's as far as it will go. Yeah. So what we're going to get on and do, we're gonna, we've got lots of information that supports our views from what we've done in previous videos. Sure. Like oxygen in steel wall, for example. Oxygen in steel wall. What we yeah. thought we'd do is we'd demonstrate, we'd provide other demonstrations where we think oxygen is contained within the substances. And it's not in the air. Yeah. Absolutely. So we're going to do that. We're going to have a look at an, an electrolyzer. Because we were given a link by um, Spectre. Spectre. So we're going to have a little we're gonna look, look at that. that. We're going to have a look at electro coagulation electrocoagulation sounds very complicated but really it's just electrolysis really it's just it? electrolysis absolutely of course so have a look at that rosman uh, many thanks but he left us a comment about indium yeah so we're gonna have a look at that we've got a short video about the, something we did with tin 2 chloride yep and aluminium we're gonna have a look at that and that's it and know? that's it really and that's it dum da da dum 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 da Marvellous. Isn't that lovely? Yeah, of course, yeah. yes. Oh, well, course. And sorry, we're going to have a look at radon as well. We're going to have a look at radon, of radon. course, from the, uh, from the, uh, from especially in Canada. Yes. Because they seem to take radon seriously, seriously over in they, Canada. And they seem to think radon, 
It's a very dangerous thing that can affect your Captain family. Captain Radon, dum 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 What a load of total BS. Yeah. Absolutely, of course. Isn't it surprising? Load of. Isn't it surprising that when when you when you when you go through this society, the amount of rubbish, the sheer amount of rubbish, rubbish. in society, is unbelievable. Let's go through a little bit of the rubbish before we get started. The globe birth, oh, wow. space travel, yeah. A lot of um, knowledge about what these stars planets. are made of and planets and planets, yeah. What they're made of. Um, what else have we got? A lot of stuff in education. We've got the chemical elements that we've realised. Any chemical element is hydrogen. Mm. That's the well. Own, that's what we're beginning to realise. That's what we're beginning to realise. The only chemic, true chemical, the only true element out of all the chemical elements are or is hydrogen. Mm. Absolutely. So you've got all the chemical elements, haven't you? Of course. Yeah. You've got all the all the rubbish in physics. You got the rubbish that people and the. You've also got the practice of um, implementing that rubbish in a practical way to and presenting it to people through and commercials, books, mm. films, and also all the all of this stuff, and also all the periphery stuff to convince people. Absolutely, that convinces that convince people it's real. It's real, yeah. and it's true. It's genuine. But it's no different to Santa Claus. It's no different to Santa, Santa Claus. Claus. We're living in a fabricated world. Mm. Man's fabricated world. Where yeah. man fabricates his understanding of the natural world simply because he can never come to know the true reality. nature of reality. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely, of course. No, I no, don't no, think on. anybody can answer that can, or, or no. even come no. question that or yeah, anything. No. Anyway, come on. Absolutely, of course. So what should we do first well, then, Peter? I'll leave it to you on this lovely day. Oh, well, well, let's go and revisit Cody's lab. Oh, let's go and revisit Cody's lab. Oh, and we forgot to mention this, didn't we, about Cody's lab. Um, Phil Indyblanc uh, gave us a, a link a link to um, a Cody's lab video. Potassium from bananas. bananas. Explosive radioactive metal from bananas. Now... Yeah, Phil, Phil asked us to just have a little look at the video. Uh, we haven't watched it, have we? No, we haven't watched it. We've not well, watched it, but... If, if you read the title, Explosive Radioactive Metal from Bananas. So one can only conclude that what he's trying to do is that he... Well, what he's inferring from the title of the video, you can get potassium metal from bananas, which gives the viewer the impression that there's metal within a banana. Oh, well, you so know, that when there's, you, there's at least potassium within the banana. Yeah, so when you ingest a banana, you're ingesting potassium. That's Absol what some, someone might think. think. Of course. But, uh, we, I mean, we've covered, we've had a look at uh, radioactive bananas before, haven't yeah, we? Yeah. And um, so, it, Cody's lab, here we go on the, on the uh, description. I extract pure potassium metal from ordinary fruit. Well, wow. Now, the thing is, a lot of people might... That all those people caught up in the understanding of chemical elements, underpinning all of the matter that's around us, okay, mm. those type of people will think that bananas have got potassium in them. Yeah. Okay. Now, in our opinion, that's absolute rubbish. Yeah. Naturally, bananas do not have potassium in them. No. Not at all. None whatsoever. None whatsoever. The potassium, any potassium that people can extract from doing certain processes to bananas, especially their skins, mm. is due to the insecticidal soap that they place on the banana. Well, they actually literally cover the bananas in insecticidal soap to prevent insecticides eating the crop. In, well, insects. Insects, yeah. Yeah, sure. Eating the crop and ruining the, the crop. Ruining the crop, yeah, sure. So if you can imagine, they, they literally soak... They they literally cover the bananas in soap, fatty uh, uh, soap. fatty soap, and I don't know how thick the layer of soap would be I'd around the banana. Quite, I'd imagine it's quite quite a lot because it would stretch as well yeah. as the bananas grow. Well, just quickly get up insecticidal soaps. Here we go. Let's get up insecticidal soaps. Insecticidal. Use, yeah, because bananas are ideal because there's always a skin around them. There's always a skin around the the. Um, here we go. 
Insecticide or soaps. soaps. Wait there, let's get up a wiki page. You're on Wikipedia. There you go. Well, we've been there already. Look at that. Yeah. Insecticide or soap Sleep. is used to control many plants, insects, pests. 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 It's been used for more than 200 years as an insect control. So, because yeah. insecticide or soap is sprayed on plants until the entire plant is saturated because the insecticidal properties of the soap occurs when the solution is wet. There you go. Composition. Insecticide or soap's active ingredient is most often a potassium salt of fatty, fatty acids. acids. There you go. So the potassium is coming from the insecticide or soap uh, that Cody's be, be able to extract. Right, yeah. So everybody who's watching uh, this video of explosive radioactive metal from bananas, you know, Cody's giving people the... Cody's not taking into account how the bananas are produced grown grown yeah. yeah and what man does as part of his um interference with nature in order to help grow the bananas mm. you know because if he realized that it was from the insecticide or so it's this potassium maybe people wouldn't get to know basically what man gets up to yeah basically. You know, and a lot of the information we're given about the world we live in is because of man's interaction uh, with the natural environment is only because of the, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. man's interaction with the natural environment. Yeah. So we, we had to leave a comment uh, right on the bottom if I can find it. Oh, how to, wait there, let me just uh, refresh the page and uh, then we can go and get. We've already got that. There we go. We, we should do, do, get do, our do. comment up there here. We, 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 left, we left potassium doesn't come from bananas. bananas. That's stupid. In the video, Cody merely extracts the remnants of the insecticidal soaps the bananas were covered in during their growing period. period yeah. The soaps are the source of potassium. potassium. Cody's fooling you. Ha 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 ha. And that's quite, yes, in our understanding, that's exactly where it's coming from. from. Yeah. So, sorry. Sorry, there you go. So, there you go. Yeah, so let's go. Well, thanks very much, Phil, for that one. Yeah. But let's go back onto the the oxygen and the steel wall from Nerd Rage. From Nerd Rage. While we're here, let's go on to our... Let's go... Oh, wait there. Come on, hurry up. Steel wall. Wait there. Nerd Rage. Burning. Yeah, Nerd Rage. There we go. Was that's it this one. one? Yeah, that's the one. This is the one from Nerd Rage. Okay, now in this one, well, in our last video, in we our last yeah. this and we put forward the view, the reason why we see all these white dots of intensity as as the steel wall burns, like we see here, yeah, is because the steel wall contains oxygen. Yeah, that's our view because um, because we think the air doesn't contain oxygen. This burns as if all this combusts as if oxygen is present mm. so the only um, way oxygen can be present in this kind of decomposition is if the steel wall contains the oxygen sure. yeah and we make sense to me that yeah. to totally and we have the view that we have the view that um, other materials that have a similar kind of reaction contain oxygen also contain oxygen, oxygen. So, so for example so let's have a look at magnesium, magnesium well let's have a, well we could look at potassium chlorate oh well, here we go yeah so here nerd rage um sprinkle over the steel wall he smears on some uh, potassium chlorate. chlorate and what's the formula for potassium chlorate uh k k c l k c l something o maybe three i don't know let's have a little butcher let's have a look. there you throw me out. I was hoping to watch, sit down and watch the video there. Come on, potassium Wait chlorate. There. Potassium potassium chlorate. It's got, I believe it's got three oxygens. KClO3. There we go. KClO3. Do we need to uh, do... So it's potassium chloride with oxygen. Three lots of oxygen. Yeah, KClO3. And in our understanding... The three oxygens come around because it's been heated three times. It's been heated up three times. So, in air. Absolutely. So, let's go back to the video. KClO3. Okay, potassium chlorate. So, there we go. 
let's so here we go is unraveled there you go potassium chloride smears it into the wire wall gives it a little bit of a squeeze and a, and then here we go offers the flame and there we go look so we can clearly see the presence of what the presence of oxygen does to the combustion absolutely okay. so we could actually argue that steel wall contains oxygen it would it would be it would be it would have an o in within its chemical formula yeah, it should ha it should it have, have an, an o, o in its chemical, chemical formula. formula absolutely it makes sense to me yeah. so let's have a little look at magnesium, magnesium. here we go magnesium oh. burning everybody's seen this one it's there magnesium, magnesium burn. burning there you go. Uh, we can do that one there. this one oh. here this is magnesium burning. There's there's a ribbon of magnesium the guy's got. Right there. I've got a bit. There you go. There you go. He's got his sort of lights to the torch. He's got a small piece of magnesium on top of the brick. Okay. Off is there it you up. go. Okay, let's have a look at the magnesium. There you go. There it's go. very bright. Right. You need sunglasses. Yeah. Absolutely. So how much oxygen do you think is contained in magnesium? Quite a point. Well, I'd say quite it, a lot. It looks similar to the potassium chlorate, in more or more intense. More intense, intense, I'd say. So more it could have four lots. Of could oxygen. have four lots of oxygens. Mm. So it should be Mg. Well, it should be MgO4. Yeah. Magnesium should be Mg. Now, this is one of the reasons why we don't think of chemical elements, because a lot of the elements, the you know the ex, the mainstream elements have got other materials in them. Mm. For example. Yeah. Um, iron would have a certain amount of carbon, carbon, coke in it. Yeah, magnesium's got oxygen, contains oxygen, and it, it, magnesium does have the contains a reducing agent as well. And also, yeah, lot, all the metals become... also contain the reducing, reducing agents. agents. Absolutely, of course, which is hydrogen. Mm. Of course, but the source of the hydrogen in magnesium is something we haven't looked at. We've not looked at that, have we? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, absolutely, of course. But so, so we've got that. What else have we got? Phosphorus. Let's, Let's have, have a little look at phosphorus. phosphorus. Now, phosphorus burns very similar to uh, what we've seen. And they used to make phosphorus because they used to um, dry out human piss. Human urine. Urine. Urination. Urination. That's what you need. If you want to be a piss taker okay. and you want to do 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 do. Whoa, yeah. Urination's what you need. If you want, want to, to be, be a urinator, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we've got phosphorus here. I like it how they call it the element series, you know. Who's this? Oh, Niall, Niall read this one. Yeah. Here we go. Let's have a little book. She says, you've got a piece of phosphor burning. Is it that bit there? That looks as if it's smouldering. I don't know whether we should, should have be... gone on... Uh, what was his name? There there oh, go. there. There you go. Wait there. There's, there's a bit here. There you go. I think he's lit it. Or it reacts with, it reacts the, with rea the air. Or it could react reacts with, with moisture, moisture in, the, in air. the air. Why does it look reddish then? Oh no, he's, he's lit it there. There we there go. You go. So I'd imagine that's a piece of phosphor. Burning Phosphorus. very intensely. It's burning very... Now how much oxygen do we think is in this? Probably I'd say about four... Four. Four. Mm. Absolutely. Well, it could have a lot more because it's still able, even when he puts the cover on it. Sure. People think it goes out. But it, it doesn't because it's retained the heat. Yeah. It but as soon as, you've, you, you, as soon as you, he removes the cap... Um, no, as soon as he places the cap on, he's restricting the pressure. No, he's restricting the pressure. pressure. Sure. But as soon as we, he removes the cap, yeah. the pressure is able to surround the um, phosphorus. Yeah. Okay, that seems quite reasonable. Are we happy with that? Yeah. Not Are sure about the. I think we need to. May not have been the moisture in the air because it's um, because there was water there. Well, the water actually put it out. Did the water put it so out? It might be. It might be just the pressure. The pressure itself. Sure. Well, let's let's have we a little need to look. look at that. Yeah, let's have. Well, we could oh, have a four little, minutes later. Yeah, as it's drying out. As it's drying out, it relights. It relights. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll have to have a little butchers of that. But we got. Oh, that's burning in pure oxygen. Spontaneous combustion of, with white pot phosphorus. Here we go. Look. This is uh, hoi soy. Hoi soy two. Hoi soy two. Experiment. Here we go. 
please note this video right there we've got some paper there we go there we go he saturated the paper so it's white phosphorus. phosphorus there we go and let's have a little butchers at this right there come on then it's drying out oh there you go there oh you it's go. going to um self-ignite self-ignite yeah. that's what it's going to do it's going to self-ignite there, so there you go there we go look at that so uh we can click yeah there you go p4 yeah, plus 502 well, where did the 502 come from? That came. F that was contained within the um, his his paste because he used two. Oh, that's all we need. He to. used two. He's got organics there. He's got some. Uh, no, what we need to do is what's the chemical symbol formula for phosphorus? Oh, what's the chemical symbol for phosphorus? Chemical. I get my symbols and formula mixed up. Phosphorus. There you go. Phosphorus. Here we go. Well, it's P. P. No, I, we'd argue that there's O in there. We'd argue that uh, it also contains oxygen. O, oxygen, of course. But uh, obviously, what all we're all we're demonstrating with looking at the phosphorus is by showing that phosphorus contains oxygen. Whenever we see because it combusts in such a way that you can ob observe the presence of yeah, oxygen. Whenever something burns, where it's intense. In our understanding, the substance contains oxygen. oxygen. Absolutely, of course. That's all we need to say about that, really. Yeah. Of course, we need we do need to have a little look at phosphorus, phosphorus anyway yeah. Yeah, as we a follow-up at yeah. some point. So we've got that one. So that's that one. There we go. Uh, yeah, let's we've done them all. At, let's have a look at our tin two chloride. That our we've tin done. two chloride. Now let's have a little butchers. Now, now you'll like this one. This is this is quite good because well, firstly we need to look at tin. And it's and how they it's made how tin two chloride is made. Here we go. Tin two chloride. Tin two chloride. Tin two chloride. Here this we go. This is a great example of is this is another migration. Group? Migration. Yeah. The understanding of that phlogiston has given us in that substances properties of substances can migrate right. through the production line, as it were, to and then uh, reside. In with the product, absolutely. Yes, you know yes. it makes uh, total sense to me. Yeah, tin two chloride, also known as stannous chloride, is a white crystalline solid with the formula CN S S N C L two. Yeah, there you go. Here we go. So is oh here you go. It is. It forms a stable dihydrate, but aqueous solutions tend to undergo hydrolysis, particularly if hot. SNCl2 is, is widely used, used as a reducing, reducing agent. agent in acid solution. Oh. Oh, there we go. Yeah, no, I just I just thought about the I just thought about that the SNCl2. So that means it should contain hydrogen, shouldn't it? Yeah, think about it. No, SNCl2 is widely used as a reducing agent, and in our understanding of a reducing agent. Oh, sorry. Yeah, are you yeah. with me? Yeah, I'm with you now. Yeah, right. Yeah, of course. You're like this. This is great. So, yeah. So this we'll repeat that one. Particularly if not SNCl2 is widely used as a reducing agent in acid solution. Mm. Right. Okay. So let's have a little look at prepare, preparation. And hydrous uh, tin two chloride is prepared by the action of dry hydrogen chloride gas on tin metal. metal. So it's hydrochloric acid, mm. basically, on tin metal, the reaction. The dihydrate is made by a similar reaction using hydrochloric acid. So S, SN plus 2HCl goes to SNCl2 plus hydrogen. Mm. The water then carefully evaporated from the acidic solution to produce crystals of uh, tin 2 chloride. Uh, this dihydrate can be dehydrated to anhydrous using acetic anhydride. Right. There you go. So bear in mind hyd hydrochloric acid. Okay. There we go. Now, so now if we think about substances, um, migrate properties migrate gaining a property through a reaction. Yeah. And then that property is then carried on further down the production line. What do we think should happen with the production of tin two chloride? Well, from looking at that, you in order to make tin two chloride, you're reacting tin metal with hydrogen chloride gas or hydrochloric or acid. Hydrochloric acid, because hydrogen chloride is the basis for hydrochloric acid then we can only confer or we can come to the conclusion that tin 2 chloride 
would contain the property would contain acidic properties acidic properties and we can also understand why tinsu chloride is a reducing agent because of the um, hydrogen because of the presence of hydrogen, hydrogen. being part of the tinsu chloride yeah right okay now given that um, the substance will um, get that property from it, the, the, the other substance it's reacting with and keep that property, okay, what we can say is that what, sh what do we think should happen then if we have uh, a solution of tin 2 chloride? What would say aluminium? And do you think the a solution of tin 2 chloride would show properties of hydrochloric acid, for example? Acidic. Yeah, yeah, I right. reckon so. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. so too. Let's go and find out. Let's go and find out. So what we did is that uh, we we did this. You'll you'll like this. This is pretty okay. Yeah, this is pretty good. So we got some uh, water in a jar. Uh, not whiskey. Absolutely, of course. And here we here we got a little tin tub of chloride. Tin chloride. Yeah, harmful if swallowed. Absolutely. Well, of course. Yeah, uh, we're going to put a few. Uh, spoonfuls spatula and a half of uh, or spoon and spoon and half as one and a half spoonfuls of tin two chloride in the water give it a stir there we go so it's a nice milky white color yeah and did you notice also oh i'll mention that when we show it yeah, yeah. and we've got a piece of aluminium okay yeah, looks like aluminium to me aluminium foil and we're going to scrunch it up and we're going to drop it in there. There we go, right there. Nearly in there. There we go. So we've Pop got to remember, the tin 2 chloride was, is prepared by um, the, the reaction between tin metal and hydrochloric acid, acid, basically. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so what we're saying is that because of the migration of uh, substances, um, what, we, what, we're gonna, what we're saying is that the tin 2 chloride should show acidic properties Basically. and an acid metal reaction Action. will produce hydrogen hydrogen gas okay so basically what well, yeah the, the, the tin 2 chloride should eat away at the aluminium basically yeah yeah of course oh, look, so good. does that actually happen well there's some bubbles forming and there are some bubbles forming we can yeah. see some bubbles there oh so, look at that wait there well let's uh, zoom, zoom out. out there we go you can see some bubbles at the bottom there yeah it's not exactly a quick reaction, is it? No, not quick. But it doesn't need to be. There you go. But obviously the strength of the acid, acidic valley properties of tin 2 chloride isn't as much, isn't as great as hydrochloric, hydrochloric acid. Yeah, because yeah. the concentration of hydrochloric acid has, has weakened. It's weakened, yeah. Obviously, because it's been, it's been reacted with tin metal. Yeah, there sure. You so so there we go and what we actually oh, look, did yeah some bubbles you can see there. the bubbles there yeah and uh let's go we're nearly there let's see if we can yeah there we go oh, oh yeah look quite at a those. few bubbles big there big bubbles there big bubble there right at the bottom there look yeah. you can see that one. Oh right yeah I now what I you did you went and got uh, you can see the the tint of chloride the whitishness is going it's becoming gray isn't it yeah because that's the aluminium basically falling apart and that's the carbon content so, yeah. of the aluminium Graying the tin two chloride. Yeah, basically. Graying, if that's yeah. a good word to use. So you go and get a splint because we want to know whether whether. There oh, we go. Go. Wait there. Let's Do go. The sound. Let's just go back. Yeah, I'm just going to go. I just want to go back and show it in view. Wait there. Wait there. There. Right. Let's put some sound on that. Listen to this very carefully. All we want is the pop. Okay. I don't want to do it too. Here we go. Oh, do it loud. It does well. Okay. Yeah, I don't want. I'm thinking about sinking. Okay, have a little listen to this. This will test whether it's hydrogen. Look at that. Did, did, should, we, should we play that again? Yeah, again. Play again. Let's play that again. Wait there, let's just do the volume up to the max. There you go. So we, we got hydrogen. So the tin 2 chloride, because of its um, because of the presence of hydrochloric acid, or you know the reaction of hydrochloric acid, well the presence of hydrochloric mm. acid 
and the properties of hydrochloric acid still in the tin tube chloride that has actually basically reacted with the metal the aluminium yeah, yeah. to produce hydrogen yeah and that that to us well to me that is a great example of where all these metals cannot be elements they can't be elements absolutely they just can't course. be elements they have to be products they have to be products absolutely yeah sure because you've got properties of all the ingredients that have gone around in around the back to make the, the back. property of of to make the yeah the, sure the metal. yeah absolutely yeah I can't fault you on that one at all. Oh, you do, we do we do this again, actually. Let's, yeah, let's have a little go at the back. Are we ready? There you go. There was another one. You know, it's it's quite clear that uh, Peter's absolutely right. We can't be thinking of chemical elements having a sole one single substance within them. No. Other than hydrogen. True. Yeah. I mean, you could argue also about like chlor chlorine, for example. Yeah, yeah. Having that bleaching property. Yeah, yeah. That is, um, that bleaching property is unique, unique to chlorine. chlorine or to a chloride. chloride. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I would, I would thoroughly agree with that. But it's that it's that bleaching that is the, the property. We should be looking at properties rather than. The actual substances. Yeah, basically. You know, this is yeah. what people should yeah. be doing. You know, there you go. Even here, you can see all, uh, it is breaking up at the back there. Look. Yeah, you can see that. Oh, yeah, you can see it's breaking yep. up at the back. Yep. Yeah. And the, the the aluminium foil is is certainly um, looks deteriorating. It looks spongy, doesn't it? it looks spongy. Absolutely. It's like the tin, doesn't it? Absolutely. So anyway, we come on. we did one earlier, didn't we? We did one about a week ago. Yeah, we did one. Yeah. And we thought we'd bring it in just to show everybody. Like here's here's one we did earlier. Yeah, only put only put a little bit of aluminium in it, and you can see the the aluminium in the left hand jar is gone. It's completely it's gone. It's completely gone. Mm -hmm. So th this is exactly what's going to happen to the right hand jar. Yeah, yeah. You know the the, mm. the aluminium will just be dissolved. Yeah, eaten away to be to be forgotten. But it's interesting because that the one on the right does look as though it's going grey. Which is the carbon coming out. That's the carbon coming out and so staining the tin tube yeah, chloride. So it'll be interesting to see whether that remains grey. Because a lot of, of it's all down to... Because the one in the jar on the left, there's quite, I put quite a lot of tin tube chloride in it. It's quite strong, which is probably why you can't see any carbon. And also yeah. because I, didn't put, I only put a small uh, piece of aluminium in it. Sure, but, you know, it, it goes to show when we look at... The phlogiston theory, one thing we can yeah. accept from the phlogiston theory is that um, certain things migrate, migrate. Yeah. Into, other, into other substances. Yeah, like things leave, like phlogiston. Something leaves only to then enter into another, another yeah. substance. Yeah, basically. Yeah, basically yeah. that. You know, yeah. that is that is something we can definitely, definitely, definitely accept. Yeah, there we go. So that's that one. That's that one. Let's have a look at uh, an electrolyzer. Let's have a little look at an electrolyzer. Oh, now you'll you'll like this one. We were given uh, a video to look at by Spectre, which is this one: testing water with an electrolyzer. An electrolyzer. Now it's only a minute long, so let's have a little listen to this. Okay. Today we'll be testing the water. This is tap water. This is smart water, Evian water, and distilled water using an electrolyzer. An electrolyzer induces electrocoagulation. Electrocoagulation neutralizes the electrical charges of the particles in the water, which causes the particles to clump together. Once the particles are separated from the water, it becomes visually clear on how much sediment remains in these water sources. Only the distilled water remains crystal clear even though it is heated as well. The only way to be 100% sure on what is or is not in your water is to distill your own water at home. To do this, visit my recommended products page on thewaterdistiller.com and get started today for less than $1. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm Steve Stay for thewaterdistiller.com. Right, thank you. Yeah, that, uh, that smart water didn't look very smart, did it? No, no. Now, mm. I suppose now some people might be fooled into thinking that all of the mucky bits come are, are present in the water. Oh, right, yeah. Or in the certain where or yeah, the certain types of water. They're present in the 
different differently sourced water. water yeah that would be better yeah yeah, yeah. that would be better so one's from the tap one smart water evian and distilled water yeah. but it's quite clear that the tap water the smart water and the evian it's quite clear that the water is breaking down the electrodes that were placed into the water which is which would generally be your anode which will generally be because we're in all because all they're doing is electrolysis, basically. Yeah. And in our experience, the anode always breaks down. Yep. Now, always. So, and the reason why the distilled water shows less um, decomposition or dirtiness is simply because there's 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 very oh. little in it to carry the electrical charge. Current, the yeah. charge. But give from it. one anode from one electrode to the yeah. other. But give it some time. Give it a week and it'll end up like that smart water. Actually, give it a week and it will still end up the same as the Evian or the smart water or the tap water. Basically, you yeah. know, because water will decompose the materials of the electrodes. Yeah, but you know, because that's what water does. Mm. It breaks things down. down. Yeah. So we actually left some guy left a comment on here, and we left one as well. And John Greater Borg Thorson. Now, this is a scam, he writes. The dirt comes from the electrodes. We agree. The reason the distilled water remains clear is because water does not conduct electricity well. Drinking distilled water without additives will also kill, kill you. you. Now, yeah. that latter part, we don't know. But I couldn't tell yeah, it. Where's but, your proof of that? But uh, this part here where he says that uh, water does not conduct electricity well, we would argue and say water does not conduct That's electricity at all. At all. Yeah. Because of the corrosive nature of water, you'll get you'll end up with like we've said with the Oils. distilled water. If you uh, put two electrodes in a glass filled with distilled water and leave them there, the water will start to um, decompose. decompose the electrodes. Hmm. Okay, and then you'll start getting the free material within the water to then carry the current. Basically, yeah. that that's which what will, will then, happen, which will then kick in decomposition rate which will increase the decomposition rate, rate yeah. you know so because your distilled water won't be distilled anymore oh, no you know this is what we've got to look at yeah so we left a comment because we had to of course distilled water has no impurities or ions in it to conduct electricity between the electrodes hence why the water remains clear we're only using the word ions so that people can relate to what we're talking yeah. about in the in, yeah. in however, the however, water will in time break down the electrodes because there's ions being freed up from the electrodes right at the surface. Yeah, to go into the water. Absolutely, of course. Yeah, it will break down the electrodes, especially the anode, and the decomposed material will form impurities in the water. Such impurities will conduct electricity, meaning if left for a week, the water would turn as dirty as the others. Whether distilled water is any good or bad for one's health is another question absolutely so sus sussing so there's no you know if people are trying to flog you any kind of water i mean we don't really know what water is good for people do what we water is good you know what well, what the, what what source of water is good where for to people? source their water from? from where to source their water from i mean i i don't know you know so, i think you know it's anyway you know, Coagulation. I'm going down that road, really. Anyway, so, so that leads us on to electrocoagulation. So electrocoagulation is a technique used for wastewater treatment. Okay, so when we look at the uh, these types of water, especially when we look at the Smart and the Tap and the Evian, or water from those sources, we can see that there's a lot of muck in them, yeah. can't we? So what they do with waste, a lot of wastewater is that they treat wastewater with electrocoagulation. They basically put two electrodes and put, put, pass the current through the water. Wash water treatment, industrial process water and medical treatment. Electrocoagulation has become a rapidly growing area of wastewater treatment due to its ability to remove contaminants that are generally more difficult to remove, remove by filtration or chemical treatment systems such as emulsified oil, total petroleum hydrocarbons, refractory organic suspended solids and heavy metals. metals. Oh, there are more, well, like ACDC. Oh, there are many brands of electrocoagulation devices available and they can range in complexity from a simple anode and cathode 
to much more complex devices with control over electrode potentials passivation anode consumption. consumption there we go cell redox potentials as well as the introduction of ultrasonic sound alt uv light and a range of gases and reactants to achieve so-called advanced, advanced oxidation, oxidation processes for refractory and or cool. recalcitrant organic substances go now we need to go i think it's on here um is it this one uh we need to go on here or is it the one description yeah the, here's we're in, in its simplest form you'll like this one an electrocoagulation reactor is made up of an electrolytic cell with one anode and one cathode mm. when connected to an external power source the anode material will electrochemically corrode, corrode due to oxidation while the cathode will be subjected to passivation now I can't it's understand. our view if we apply what we've just written what we've just read sorry to electrolysis it would appear the anode will always break down in an electrolytic process yeah. if you if you're using graphite the the the, the anode will break, will break down. down if you use copper copper it will break down. down if you use magnesium it will, it will break, break down. down if you use um iron or it steel it will break down you if, gold. You, if you use gold it will break down if you use even platinum. some of the hardiest of substances like Pal platinum palladium. palladium it will still break, break down. down in time in time which means it's c c more than possible the oxygen product is derived in part from the electrode Good. not the water not water even that doesn't make sense because the anode material will electrochemically corrode due to oxidation. And yet, how do they know it's due to... But, yeah, but they only say it's due to oxidation simply because of the oxygen in the water. They 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 think wa water is H2O. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. But the oxygen comes from the, the material. Uh, material, which then leaves. See, the oxygen leaves the anode, which means it can break down which means it can break Ab down yeah sure because oxygen preserves substances yeah it preserves substances so if oxygen is within a contained within a yeah, yeah. substance it will preserve it but when it's released it's more prone to decomposition absolutely of course yeah no it's just an interesting because elect electrolysis is is a is a process where you normally would get oxygen at the anode given a certain setup of electrodes and electro yeah. ele electrolytes electrolytes and you you'd get hydrogen at the, at cathode. the cathode but then we've had hydrogen at the anode we've had hydrogen at the anode, anode. as well because yeah. you can get carbon and we've all, i'm sure we've also had oxygen at the cathode, cathode. as well yeah absolutely of course so mm. you know it's it's um but all we're showing this for is simply because the anode will break down. Yeah. So when yeah. we do look at this, these different types of sourced water and the state of the the water in the glass in the jars, you know, three of them simply it's just the electrodes breaking down. Yeah. It's got yeah. nothing to do with any. It's no different to colloidal whatever. colloidal silver. It's colloidal no different corrosion. Co colloidal silver. Yeah. Yeah. It's all the same. It's, all the same it's same just stuff. absolutely yes. It's just the deterioration of the uh, materials placed in water. Yeah. Anyway, we just need to end on uh, Rosman's comment on the Indian. So Rosman's comment on the Indian. Indian. I think we need to go on. Yeah. On our last comment, we we um, we we talked about cadmium and the and indium in search of our reducing agent Agents. which was hydrogen mm. and uh, with indium we couldn't find anything on wikipedia on how it was made on how it was made mm. so uh, rosman very kindly left us a comment because he'd done a little bit of research and he writes here we go scientific american 1863 reich and reich richter. richter examined ores from smelting thallium. thallium which they roasted to expel sulfur and arsenic then mixed with hydrochloric acid evaporated to dryness and distilled the impure chloride of zinc was examined to reveal the indigo blue line of indium in the forms of chloride hydrated oxide and the pure metal the blue line is is more refrangible 
than strontium and close to potassium, potassium. What is currently known as this chloride is not precipitated by hydrosulfuric acid. Ammonia precipitates from the chloride, the hydrated oxide. The dry chloride absorbs water with avidity. Wow. The chloride fused on charcoal with soda yields a lead grey globule of metal, very soft and ductile. Oh, the chloride fused on charcoal. Oh, they, well, charcoal with contains. soda. With soda, which is sodium hydroxide. Sodium. Sodium. Mm. Um, or sodium hydroxide. Even it may Probably. have a hydroxide well, it's content. It's a maybe. So sodium source. Sodium source, source. yeah, soda. Um, but. Uh, and then Scientific American, 1872, its chief well, source... I was going to say, also, they used hydrochloric acid, which contains hydrogen. Yeah, they also used hydrochloric acid as well, there. Which uh, contains They're mixed hydrogen. with hydrochloric acid. Um, its chief source is metallic zinc. This is indium. When zinc containing indium is almost dissolved in dilute sulfuric or muriatic acid, which is hydrochloric acid, and even sulfuric acid has H2SO4, or, yeah. um, the indium is left in the black spongy or flocculent residue. residue. This black residue is found to contain lead, cadmium, iron and arsenic, sometimes copper and thallium, and a small amount of indium. indium. The solution of this residue is separated by sulfuretted hydrogen oh. from solutions acidulated only with acetic acid and on the perceptibility of its hydrate by ammonia oh, yeah, and, and carbonate, carbonate of barium. barium. From its soluble salts, metallic indium is readily thrown down in a spongy oh. state by oh. means of zinc. The washed sponge of metal is the pressed together between filtering paper by aid of a screw press and finally melted under a flux, flux of cyanide, cyanide of, of potassium. potassium. Mm, wow. Well, mm, now. So, by the sounds of it, from, well, now, since we've left that comment to... Yeah, uh, we, we replied to Rosman. Rosman. Yeah, Absolutely, of course. There, there, it looks like there's plenty of sources for well, hydrogen. Hydrogen. Absolutely. Thanks for that, Rosman. Looks like the solutions are exposed to hydrogen in many ways. Sulfuretted hydrogen. And also the cyanide of potassium that helps the indium to become a metal. Cyanide is a reducing agent. Yeah. Um, isn't it strange that they found the indigo blue line? This is the most interesting part, though. Isn't it strange they found the indigo blue line of indium, and yet zinc is a blue silvery metal? Mm. Which could mean they found the indigo blue line of zinc, or there's indium in zinc, or indium is an offshoot of, of zinc. zinc. Remember? The properties will then get passed on down yeah. the production line, yeah? So it's possible the zinc, the, yeah. the property of the blueness of zinc, is carried on down the line and it comes out in the indium. Yeah. This would indicate zinc is not an element and neither is indium. Both products of manufacturing processes palmed off as elements. Absolutely, of course, yeah. Ho, ho. That, that's what we're beginning ho, to ho, see. Ho, 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 Absolutely. Ho, ho, ho. I mean, there you go. That's, you yeah. know, so thank you ever so much, Rosmond, for that. That's a very good um, bit of... Useful bit of piece of information. Use, that supports our view. Yeah. You know. So, we've got that. What's next then? Oh, that's it. Is that it? That's Have we it. done it all? We've done it all. Really? Yeah, we've done it all. Have we done it all? Are you well, sure yeah. now? Yeah. We we did that one. We did. We just want to do radon. Oh, yeah. we haven't. No, we haven't done the radon. Oh, right. Okay. Now, yeah, and finally, 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 we did uh, this. We showcased this video at the beginning. Presence of radon gas That's in your home. home. Now, after doing our previous video, we've come to the conclusion that radon gas is basically a pseudo element. Mm. Unless, of course, somebody can show us some radon. But then Rosman did send. I'm sure it was Rosman who sent us some info about radon. And it was main. It is mainly f um, found from uh, drilling and milling, mining like uranium. Yeah, yeah. So the question is: Is it a result of man's interference in that environment? Area, environment, or is because it the, naturally? Does it naturally it, occur? Does it naturally occur? Because it, what what effect does blasting have? deep down underground on some certain minerals on certain minerals. yeah sure and drilling drilling Dr milling and all yeah this sure stuff. because don't forget you're boring you're you're tunneling down you know and the, the, have you seen you know some of the tunnels though they're massive yeah, you, can, no, yeah. you can get yeah. uh, diggers down there yeah you know so all of man's activity 
what we think, in our opinion, is having an an impact on creates the radioactivity. Cr- it creates all of the all of these stuff that man, man palms off as nat- being naturally it's occurring. Going, yeah. So anyway, let's go on there. But anyway, so but the radon gas when they're trying to flog people, radon gas detectors and all this lot, they want yeah. your they money. want your money. That's all they want. Yeah, but especially if if they're, if it like in America or Canada, for example, they made it a, a law that every home should have a radar. Did they detector. really? No, I'm just saying. Oh, they may have done. Yeah, sure. They may well do. Yeah, it creates jobs. It creates it, yeah, your money. where you live, you, the government may actually make radon testing law. Yeah. That if you own your own home, you have to have radon testing. Yeah. Or in order for you to have an insurance policy, have you had your radon uh, yeah. test? Yeah. Otherwise, no, you can't claim. You've got to. Uh, you know, this is how they get people to believe the stuff. Yeah, I know, yeah. Well, isn't when, it? It's one well, method, isn't it? Yeah, but when you think of it, everyone should know that government means mind control. And the best way they can control the mind is through, by, through, through work. Money. Well, work. Through, through work well, and money. money. Yeah, absolutely, of course. Because if you think you've got to pay for it, then you think that it's real. Yeah, basically. You know, yeah. it's more real. That's where you get the axiom, where some where a belief or an understanding or an idea is actually put into practice. Mm, yeah. you know. But anyway, how do radon test kits work? We are encouraging homeowners and employers to test their buildings for radon. This is a UK site, this one. Mm. But with several different types of radon detectors, test kits and monitors on the market, which should you choose? Mm. Read on to find out. Yeah. She got a passive radon detector. This is what we saw in the video. Comprising a small domed case containing a special lens. These detectors work by allowing air in the property to pass through the detectors and over the lens where the radioactive radon particles will make microscopic indentations or etches on the lens. But what about the background radiation? Yeah, now this is the thing. What about how does the detector differentiate between background radiation, which every oh. anyone can probably, uh, well, well, we can detect it with our little. Absolutely, we can detect something with our, you know, one, which yeah. is said to be background radiation. So how would one differentiate between the background radiation that people are alleging to detect and the radon, the radioactive radon gas? Yeah. Any ideas? Know. I've got a point. There's one, two here. Micro sieverts. Point one, point two, micro. Absolutely. Got, now, do you think how can we t- how can we detect if there's radon gas around here? Couldn't tell me. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. you know. So, I mean, I have emailed a company asking them point one, one. Um, how do they differentiate between uh, background radiation and uh, radon gas, but whether I'll get a reply is, uh, yeah. you know. But the, the detectors must be sent to a validated laboratory for analysis where the lens will be developed and calculations made as to the level of radon it has been exposed to. So what they're saying essentially there, if we read between the lines, they haven't detected any radon, radon. Yeah. but they've detected something, something's happened to the lens and they use that as a guide to make the calculations. Yeah. It's, it's no different to the, to your oximeter that places over your finger or your earlobe. Where they measure the light that where, passes where through. The oximeter is supposed to men- is supposed to measure the amount of saturated oxygen, oxygen in, in the blood. In the blood. And yet all it's all it's measuring is the amount of light that can pass through the, the finger, finger or, or the, the earlobe. earlobe. And then it, it calculates Absolutely of course the, the oximeter calculates sure and th- this is no different, different yeah. in our opinion yeah. no different at all and as radon levels fluctuate constantly the most accurate results from any type of radon test are obtained when the test is performed over a long period of time three months three months but you know i mean you know if i you oh, know what's the, the other what the other ways of doing it the other ways of doing it you've got um, digital ra- radon monitor yeah, a go. digital radon monitor. Digital radon monitors actively detect and analyze concentrations of radon within a building and display this on a screen. Wow. Again, how do we how can the, this device differentiate between background radiation and radioactive radon gas? Yeah. Yeah. That's the trouble. They people rely too much on these on rubbish. These d- displays. Display. There are some absolutely there are some people who live their lives and they've got a display or a device 
to measure everything. Their heartbeat, yeah. Yeah. The, their speed, their going, their temperature, to, to check whether they're okay. Yeah. And yet, you know, they don't need all this stuff. Yeah, you no, know, yeah. It's all a waste of money. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, if anyone out there has got any ideas how these devices can differentiate between background radiation and the ra oh, actual right, radioactive yeah. radio yeah. gas, but another please let us know. Yeah. Oh, I know what it is. What's that? It's because they use a different SI unit. Oh, they, yeah, they might you just use a different SI so unit. Instead, instead of using, oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> instead of using micro sieverts per hour, they use Becquerel's per metre square cube. Very good. Now, there you go. It's all, well, really, in our opinion, oh, it's all dear. one big con. con. <laughs> one big con. Oh, dear. Uh, so, the, you know, if, you want, if you, you're going to get, and there's lots of companies out there flogging, uh, radon detectors, Texas. yeah, all all saying that it's dangerous. Just, it can cause lung yeah. cancer. Yeah. It can do this. It, it can, can do, do that. that yeah. And yet, all of it is rubbish. rubbish. In our opinion, of in course. our opinion, of, of course. course yeah. So I go. think that would be it for yeah. today. Wasn't that a cracking Christmas yeah. special? special yeah. Also, a festive, festive special. Special, absolutely, of course. So there you have it. Yeah, there you have it. Yeah. So thanks ever so much, and always remember till next, next time. time if something doesn't make sense, like Christmas. Yeah. Or that we breathe oxygen in the air. And exhale carbon dioxide. That uh, water is made of hydrogen and oxygen. oxygen. Yeah. To not think that the properties of substances don't get carried over. So, yeah, don't, 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 mig that don't migrate. Or to think, yeah, that the properties of substances don't migrate. Yeah, but they, you see, the thing is, a lot of people don't think that. They can't think that because it gets... It means that um, yeah, because they want to think that you've created something elements. new. They want yeah, but absolutely. They want to think of elements. Well, we've created a new element like aluminium. How can aluminium have carbon in it? That's rubbish. How can aluminium have sodium in it? How can aluminium even produce hydrogen? Oh right, well, yeah. You know, this is it, you know, we've really got to s stop thinking about man's chemical elements. Mm. And think more in line of products. Product? No, no. Yeah, think more in line of products with regard to man's world, but think more of natural elements and properties oh, well, yeah. of substances, mm. which are more important than uh, man's rubbish. Absolutely. Yeah. And then we can carry on. But you know, the sun being electromagnetic right. uh, radiation. Absolutely. Yeah. White light be made up of RGB. Absolutely, of course, yeah. If you think uh, chlorine is congruent. Oh, well, yeah. If you think oxygen is paramagnetic. Absolutely, of course, yes. Yeah. So to... If you think fish breathe oxygen. oxygen. If you think the wave, radio waves can be bounced off the ionosphere. If you think there is an ionosphere. Oh, right. Yeah. Absolutely. That's if you point. think there's a dome over the yeah, earth. Yeah. Absolutely, of if course. If you think the earth has magnetic poles. Absolutely, yes. I mean, it's all total santa a santa if you think santa's real oh well yeah if you think santa's real if you think santa's real if you think jesus lived yeah and jesus could do all of these magical mystery my yeah. Uh, yeah. holy things yeah, well, no, yeah walk on water walk on water mm. feed the three thousand on just one loaf of bread, bread from, yeah. the, from the spa shop yeah well yeah absolutely it's all I was going to say bullshit. It's all rubbish. It's all rubbish. It Absolutely. totally is. Absolutely, of course. Let's get living in reality. Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely, of course. So thanks ever so much. And we're going to go off and have a reality check. Check. Okay. So, thanks ever so much. See you next time. Bye. Bye-bye. So the earth isn't round. It's flat. How do you know? I've observed it in all my travels over Europe. It's flat. Everywhere it's flat.